Hey everyone, good to see you guys. Um, you know, as we dive into our reading today, which is Judges 7 through 10, we're basically diving into some of the darkest days of Israel's history. I mean, uh, as you have you've seen, you know, up until this point, God has been so good to his people, right? He's rescued them, he's redeemed them, I mean, he's provided for them again and again, and yet his faithfulness was constantly met with faithlessness. And, uh, you know, as you read up to this point, they've been turning to other gods and other idols in the land as opposed to turning to the one true God. And so here we are, the Lord would raise up judges, which is where we get the name of our book, to help rescue them. And that is who Gideon is. And that's who we're going to focus on today. He's the fifth judge of Israel's judges who will be used by God to bring deliverance to his people. And um, you read this yesterday, but in the beginning of Judges 6, you see God asking Gideon to fight and to defeat the Midianites. But God is constantly met with doubt from Gideon. You know, you heard him say this. He, you know, he says, but my tribe is the weakest. He tests God to see if it's really him. Uh, but by the end of the chapter, you see that he finally gets it, and so he puts an army together, and all of a sudden, something unexpected happened in chapter 7. Just as Gideon gets in a groove, he's filled with greater belief, he's starting to move forward. What does God do? You would think that he's going to stack the deck, but no, instead he actually begins to strip away. And so chapter 7, verse 2 uh, through 3, this is what I want to focus on. This is what it says. It said, the Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into your hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. Okay, so I don't know about you, but if your army was cut more than half, you'd probably say, okay, God, that's enough. I have great faith, but God keeps on going. And uh, verses 4 through 7, he says, it's still too many, and so he dwindles the army from 22,000 men down to 300. I did the math. Okay, that's an 86% drop in uh, in his army. I mean, that is huge. And why does he do this? Remember what he said. He wants everyone to know that the victory is his. And obviously, Gideon, he's filled with doubt again. And so God said in verse 10, uh, he said this, If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterwards, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. You see, God knew this entire time that Gideon was still afraid. God knew that Gideon was still not convinced that he was with them. Uh, but as soon as Gideon heard, right, things began to change. And in verse 15, it said, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. And finally, we all see that he is finally convinced of God's faithfulness. He's convinced of his presence and is putting his trust in him and acknowledging him for who he is. And so here's the question that I want to focus on. What changed? What changed in Gideon? You know, from Gideon freaking out to having little faith and belief to all of a sudden filled with faith and courage to defeat an army, even though his army has dwindled from 22,000 people down to 300. In fact, in that same verse, in verse 15, he says, he returned to camp, to the camp of Israel and called out, get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. I mean, basically he is proclaiming in faith victory right before the war has even happened. I mean, what changed in Gideon? And here's what I believe changed. It was God's presence and it was God's voice. You see, his confidence changed from his own ability to God's presence and what God can do. Um, you know, he, he realized he was not alone. And what God is, you know, the fact that God has also gone before him and is also with him. And, you know, I don't know where many of you guys are at today, but I do know that many of us still struggle to believe, especially when we're in a battle, especially when we're in a war or in the place of hurt and hard. And let me just tell you, you're not alone. You know, he walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. We read about that. He also spoke with Moses as one speaks with a friend, right? We read about that whole story. He led his people through to the promised land. And he also came and took on flesh when he sent his own son here. And uh, in Hebrews 13, 5, God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You know, when you read that, he doesn't say, I will sometimes leave you. Or he says, I will never leave you. And so take confidence. You're not alone. He's with you. 
So I just encourage you today, meet with him, pray to him, inquire from him, and ask him to strengthen you where you're at. And I hope you have a blessed day.